boys and girls, how are you today? Good. I am well also. I know you've been studying living and non-living things, so I looked through my books and I found something that I think you will enjoy, um, because it is definitely a living thing. So, here is our story today. It's called Night of the Moon Jellies. Yeah, look at that. It's by Mark Shasta, who also is the illustrator. Um, let's see the back. Oh, look. Want to see the front and the back together? Kind of makes one long, big picture. Don't you feel like you're out on the water? Soon. Okay. Night of the Moon Jellies. Seven, I helped out two days a week at Margaret's, a seaside hot dog stand that made the best lobster rolls in New England. It was named after the owners, my grandmother Mary and her sister Grace. One Friday morning, I woke up at Graham's and grabbed my apron on the way out the door. Along the beach, I picked up pieces of sea glass, worn and rounded by the ocean. Then I found something that felt like jelly. I put it in a plastic bag with the sea glass, poured in some seawater, and ran the rest of the way to Margrat's. Graham was already there, getting the stand ready for opening. She hugged me, and a puff of flour rose up from her apron. I gave her the plastic bag, and she held it up to the light. It looks like something special is in here with the sea glass mark, she said. What is it, Graham? It's a surprise, said Graham, but it will have to wait until later. She gave me a kiss and put the bag near the sink. There was still a lot of work to do before opening. Graham took a big pinch of salt, stirred it into the lobster sauce, and scooped a bit into a cup. We each took a sweet, buttery sip. Graham folded and pinned my apron to make it fit, then put a paper hat on my head. She started to shape hamburger patties while I stacked them between sheets of wax paper. Good morning, you two, boomed Uncle Al. He switched on the grill and sprinkled it with slices of pepper and onion. Graham started the fried clams while I checked the ketchup, mustard, and relish jars. I was also in charge of straws and napkins. Aunt Grace walked in, tying her apron just as the first customers drove in. Cousin Rolly appeared around the corner with a stack of umbrellas on his shoulder. I cranked them open as he dropped them into the holes in the tables. Behind us, the stand had filled. Three lobster rolls, two orange sodas, burger, three fries, two chocolate shakes. Fries crackled, cheeseburgers sizzled. More rolls, called Uncle Al. Rushing through, Graham said, carrying a kettle of clam chowder up front. Low on straws, Rolly shouted. I hurried to fill the box. Finally, the seats facing the water were empty again. Let's have lunch while we can, Graham said, bringing over a tray of lobster rolls and onion rings. We ate where we could watch the boats. I think it'll be even busier tonight, Graham said, and we're out of onion rings. She opened a bag of onions and sliced them into loops. We dipped them into sticky batter, then into breadcrumbs. Uncle Al hauled the popcorn machine to its nighttime place on the counter. Graham filled its tray with corn kernels and butter sticks. Uncle Al switched on the inside lights. Four popcorn, four orange sodas, two burgers, two dogs, six vanilla shakes. Cheese, yelled Uncle Al. Right here, Aunt Grace said, dropping a stack of slices on a plate. Customers crowded the counter. Radios blared baseball and music. Horns beeped. Ketchup's low, shouted Uncle Al. Lobster rolls ready, Graham called. Pots clanged. The register rang. Customers waved as they drove off. I ate a cheeseburger. It was a busy, noisy night. When the last customers left, it was time to begin the night chores. 
Uncle Al scrubbed the grill to a silvery shine. Graham washed the pots and utensils. I helped her dry them and put them away. Rolly collected the umbrellas. The counter workers went home. Good night, you two, Uncle Al said as he locked the stand. He hugged us and drove off in the moonlight, leaving us with the sounds of crickets and rustling leaves. Graham handed me a sweater. You'll need this for the surprise, she said. She started down the pier and stopped at a boat, the periwinkle. Welcome aboard, said a cheery voice. Tyler, a fisherman, helped us onto the boat. There's hot chocolate inside, he said. Tyler threw the ropes onto the dock and climbed up to start the engine. The engine roared as we headed out to the dark sea. Let's go in and keep warm, Graham said. The cabin smelled of hot chocolate. The lights along the shore got smaller and closer together. We went out farther and farther. The engine slowed. Graham held up the bag of sea glass and jelly. Something sparkled inside. It's a moon jelly, Graham said. I almost dropped the pot of chowder when this moon jelly flickered in the bag near the sink. The engine stopped suddenly. Graham peered out the window. Tyler's found the place where this belongs, she said with a gentle smile. I bounded out of the cabin. Thousands of moon jellies stretched along the sea in every direction. I opened the bag and poured out our moon jelly. Now it was with the others. We stood on the deck and watched the shimmering sea. After a while, Tyler started the engine and we headed home. At the dock, we thanked Tyler and walked to Graham's. She made chamomile tea and put some melon on a plate. She held up the pieces of sea glass to the light, then put them into a small box. She was writing something on the box when my eyes began to close. It read, with love to Mark from Graham, night of the moon jellies.